Okay, so we've been talking about balance sheet accounts and um, in particular with corporations, we've talked about you know the cash account, the dividends, uh, the retained earnings accounts. Uh, so today we're going to focus on the income statement for corporations. Uh, as you can see from this slide, um, the corporation's income statement is a bit different than the income statement that you've been used to in the past, which is for sole proprietorships. Um, the major differences are that you know you have these headings. You have income from operations. You have income from discontinued operations, other comprehensive income, OCI, uh, income tax expense, and EPS info. In a proprietorship, uh, it, it, a proprietorship does not pay income tax. A corporation is a third party entity and that's why it pays its own corporation's income tax. So uh, those are some of the, um, the differences and I just wanted to show you how an income statement would look like. Uh, very briefly on this slide it says, for example, you have sales of $800,000, you've got uh, cost of goods sold for $600,000 and you have a gross profit of $200,000. Uh, operating expenses, you know, these include all the types of expenses that you've, you're, you're used to. I'm just putting it under one line. You can show this as one line on your income statement or you can show all the, the parts of it. If you show it as one line, then what you would do is go to your notes and distribute all the expenses in the notes. You would distinguish them in the notes. Um, so income from operations is $150,000. This is what you're used to so calling net income. So this basically this is income from operations of the business. Then you have income from discontinued operations, um, and we'll get into that in, in a couple of minutes. And then you have other comprehensive income. This makes income before tax at 160,000 because you're simply adding from income from operations uh, uh, all these th th those two incomes. And then you have income tax expense and the net income is 128,000. The income tax expense is not accurate to the, the T as a percentage, it's just there to show. So you can see that income to income statement looks a bit different than the uh, proprietorship's income statements. So what are these additional sections of uh, income statements? Um, so obviously we've ha we have income from discontinued operations, we have other comprehensive income, income tax expense and EPS income, oh sorry, e EPS info. Discontinued operations, what are they? Discontinued operations refers to the disposal of a significant segment of a business, such as the elimination of an entire activity. So let's say uh, when HBC, Hudson's Bay Company, sold Zellers, basically that means that they have now sold this segment, this part of the business, to Target. So in the year that they sell this business, they would have income from operations and income from discontinued operations. So that means that they have discontinued that part of the business. And that happens quite frequently. As you buy and sell businesses, as you, know, you can move from one area of business to another, uh, you will have uh, income from discontinued operations. So each item should be carefully explained in the notes. Anything that you have discontinued, you need to explain what is it that you discontinued and what happened to it that you need to discontinue it. So this is an example of discontinued operations, but this is the kind of things you would have in this section. Then you have other comprehensive income. Other comprehensive income is basically income from extraordinary items. So what are these extraordinary items in a business? They are infrequent, they are not typical, and they're not subject to management decisions. Um, so for example, you had an earthquake and uh, things happened. So you would have other comprehensive income slash loss. Um, so that means that you may have a loss. Uh, perhaps you disposed of uh, certain things because of uh, you know, the, uh, the discontinued operations. It was not your plan, but it happened that you had to dispose of certain things. So that would become part of your uh, other comprehensive income. Uh, you may have disposal of long-term assets, but disposal of long-term assets are usually management decisions. 
So when I said that you know they're infrequent and, and uh, not typical and not subject to management decision, I don't mean that that's the case all the time. So either let's say they're infrequent and they're not typical means that you know you're not going to sell your building every year, but you might sell it every 35, 40 years. So it's it's uh, it's not typical. It's infrequent. So you would put that sale under in uh, other comprehensive income. And I'm sure you recall that disposal of assets. Uh, t terminology and, and uh, uh, transactions from, from uh, one of the previous chapters. So that's other comprehensive income. Then you might have, or you will have, income tax expense. Income tax expense uh, can be broken down into two different components. You might have a private company or you might be a public company. For a private company, the income tax expense is uh, about 20% depending on the province. In Ontario, it is about 16% for private companies. For public companies, it can be anywhere between 35 and 45%. In Ontario, it is about 38% these years. So you might have uh, a high uh, income tax expense because it's a public company. Uh, and it is one of the biggest expenses for a company. It's reported on the income statement after all incomes and expenses have been calculated. So you recall that from the slide that we, we looked at earlier. You have income tax expense at the very end. right? So income tax expense, as I mentioned, is a significant expense. Um, however, it is reported properly at the end of the income statement. Once, <coughs> excuse me. Once you've created this income statement for a corporation, you will have a couple of um, formulas to look at, a couple of ratios to display at the end of income statement. The first one, the most important one, is earnings per share. Earnings per share indicates the net income earned by each common share. So basically what you're looking at, you're looking at the net income, which is after tax net income, uh, how much of it belongs to each common shareholder. So companies report EPS on the income statement. The formula is given to you. Net income minus the preferred shareholder's dividends divided by the number of common shares gives you EPS. There are, there are different types of EPS that you have, uh, that you will see on income statements. There's regular EPS, original EPS, diluted EPS, fully diluted EPS, we don't, we're not getting into all the types of EPS, we're just explaining to you that EPS is reported and this is basically a basic EPS formula. You will look at net income, take out the preferred shareholders' dividends because you're not looking at preferred shareholders, you're looking at common shareholders and you divide that by the number of common shares, outstanding, and you get EPS. So here is how EPS is usually shown. So you have EPS info, income from operations. So you take the income from operations amount and you come up with $5.50 as the per share income from operations. Then you take the income from discontinued operations and then you, you know, come up, use that as the, uh, as the net income for, uh, amount here and take away the preferred shareholders' uh, dividends and so on and you come up with $2. And then you have other comprehensive income. In this example, you have negative $1.50. Income tax expense is negative $2 because obviously you have to pay income tax. And net income with, uh, for EPS, net income at the very end is $4. So you can see 550 plus 2 minus 150 minus 2 would be $4. So that's how the EPS info is shown on uh, the income statement at the very end. One of the other formulas that I just want to highlight here is the price earnings ratio. Price earnings ratio basically helps investors determine whether the shares are a good investment or not. You're looking at price and earnings at the same time and you're looking at, you're basically comparing them. So a high PE ratio can be one indicator that investors believe the company has good future potential and they may be looking at in buying the company's shares. How do you calculate this? You take the market price per share, you divide that by the EPS that you just calculated, and you get price earnings ratio. It's more of a, a complicated ratio. You just need to understand that it is used as an indicator 
for future potential of a company. So we have finished chapter 15, which was focusing on uh, corporation accounting, uh, specifically dividends, retained earnings, and the corporation income statement uh, as uh, you know uh, the focus of this chapter. So thank you for listening, and hopefully you guys have understood a lot, and which will, this will help you in not just your homework, but also in your evaluations uh, for this course. Thank you very much. <laughs>